Welcome to 1 Corinthians Bible Study. Uh, today we continue in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Um, and now really dealing with the heart of what Paul's trying to drive at is there are those who are questioning the resurrection of the dead, the resurrection to come. Um, and here they're kind of melding together some of the, the pagan ideas of the culture in Greece uh, along with their knowledge of Jesus. And so Paul's kind of saying, no, actually, uh, if we believe Jesus died and rose again, uh, the center of our hope as Christians is also in the resurrection which is to come. And so uh, this is really hidden into the meat of the chapter, uh, why uh, the resurrection hope, resurrection power is so important uh, for us as Christians. So uh, let's take a look at today's text. We continue in our text from chapter 15. Uh, now Paul is getting into kind of the root issue of uh, what he is addressing in this chapter, and specifically that uh, there is doubt creeping in about the resurrection of the body. And so, but if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. And more than that, we are found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified that God, about God that he raised Christ from the dead. Right, and so he's really kind of, he's giving us these if right then statements right if 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 we're going to go with this idea there's no resurrection of the body um then we got huge problems if there's no resurrection then jesus who had a body then he himself didn't rise um and if he didn't rise then everything we're telling you is useless and we're liars because we told you jesus rose from the dead this was the gospel we've been proclaiming this is the most important thing as paul's been talking about and if we've been telling you that and there's no resurrection then, then we're liars and so he's just kind of laying out here that reasoned argument remember we said he started with scripture then he went to the eyewitness testimony now he's kind of getting into this logic reason aspect right if so we're going to have this idea of no resurrection well then we're in big trouble um, so he goes, but, if he but he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. So kind of repeating there. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Uh, yes, Jesus died for them, but there's no victory over them if there's no resurrection. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. Um, I don't find this has huge implications for how we understand Christianity and faith today. A lot of problems that are out here, but uh, we sort of start first with just kind of where the this Corinthian church is coming from. Our uh, Concordia commentary kind of gets into this is typical of Greek culture, this idea that uh, kind of we're leaving the body behind. There was mocking of Paul in Acts 17 when he kind of talked about Jesus rising from the dead. Um, they didn't really think that made a lot of sense to them. Um, the, um, here's an example. When the dust hath drained the blood of a man, once he is slain, there is no resurrection. I mean, Greek philosophers sharing these ideas. Or Plutarch believed the, the only that only the soul could attain to the realm of the gods through freeing itself of attachment to the senses and becoming pure, fleshless, and undefiled. Um, so this idea of uh, kind of leaving the body behind was huge in Greek thought. And to be honest with you, this has crept into uh, kind of the, even into most Christian thinking today. Um, so commonly Greeks believe that at death only a person's soul was taken by a ferryman across the river Styx to the gloomy world of the shades. This animistic idea of only the soul survives death in a shadowy, unhappy existence is common in most non-Christian cultures, even highly advanced cultures like Egypt, Mesopotamia, and Greece. It's so only in Christianity has been brightened by the hope of the resurrection of the body, which should stick out to us when we see many Christians going back 
do that, to, to get uh, running away from the incredible hope. And this is the angst Paul has in this text with those who are denying the resurrection. Um, the Corinthians may have woven their new faith into the traditional Greek fabric. Um, on the one hand, they had to admit that faith in Christ's resurrection was central Christian teaching. That's what was proclaimed and that's what they believed in. On the other hand, they insisted in the line of the Greek tradition that the only resurrection they would see was a spiritual one. So it was kind of like, yes, Jesus died and rose again. But for us, you know, it's just a spiritual awakening or a spiritual resurrection. Um, and this has happened already. And they lost hope of this resurrection of the body to come. So Paul's saying, whoa, we got big, big problems here. Um, so again, we're kind of in this scripture to eyewitness now and to reason. Um, and they had held this idea that it was for Christ. Resurrection was about Christ, but not about us. And, and Paul's like, no way. Then we'd be false witnesses of Christ's resurrection. Um, and then ultimately this leads to, if Christ didn't raise, and we're not going to be raised, then we're just trusting Jesus for our day-to-day -day life, but it doesn't matter in the end. Um, and we might as well give up. Because if we're not rescued to newness of life in Christ, um, and this is really dangerous. I know one of the things that's come out recently is the people are discussing how millennials believe faith and they don't want to hear so much about heaven and life eternal. Uh, they want to hear about uh, difference God makes for today, um, which, okay, right? Christ is about this life and the life to come. Uh, if we focus only on today, well, what if nothing's going well today? Um, sometimes our hope really does end up being the life to come. Uh, you may contract coronavirus today and die. Um, our, our hope, yes, Jesus is, gives me strength and peace and joy in the midst of whatever trials I face today, um, but it is ultimately about his salvation and the resurrection and eternal life. Um, I, I want to just make a mention of a, a, a movie I really enjoy. It's called The Body. Uh, it's from around 2000. Uh, it's kind of based off of the idea of a skeleton in God's closet, um, which is the idea that, you know, there's this skeleton they find in a tomb and they start to believe, whoa, this might be Jesus and the dates match up and all these things. And um, at the end of the movie, you find out, no, it's not his. But uh, the people wrestling with, if Jesus didn't actually rise from the dead, and ultimately, my faith is in vain. Um, there's one guy who commits, a priest who commits suicide. Um, and it's sort of because all of a sudden, if Jesus isn't raised from the dead, then everything is in vain. Um, I'll try to find a link for that uh, in the video. But uh, it's a it's a fundamental reality that the the resurrection of Christ is something we can be sure in. Paul went through the eyewitness account. He went through the scripture. Uh, we can be very confident in that. Um, but it's also important to know that it is, it is the linchpin. It is the central uh, important aspect of everything we believe in that Christ is risen. We too will rise. And our assurance and our joy and our hope is for this life, but ultimately for the life to come. And so um, how does that translate to us today? Uh, let us celebrate with joy the resurrection of Christ and the promise that he has given us of a resurrection of, uh, to newness of life. Uh, we have no need to despair. Our faith is not in vain. Why? Well, because Christ has indeed risen and we too will rise. Um, what is God calling me to do? He's calling me to believe, right, in the resurrection to trust what has been passed on uh, to us, uh, that Christ has indeed risen, that his followers have been transformed by the, the power of the Holy Spirit to be bold proclaimers of this gospel as Paul is to us, and that we are to future generations, that we might believe in the resurrection and be proclaimers of this resurrection. And so again, kind of get back useless or vain. Our faith is not useless. It is not in vain. Why? Because Christ has risen and we too will rise. Our faith is not 
futile. Uh, we are not to be pitied even when we face the harshest circumstances uh, in this earthly life because we know that Christ has given us hope unto eternal life. It is not only for this life. We have hope in Christ for now and into the life to come. So let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the power of the resurrection. We pray that in a world where people have kind of just think we're a soul um, without a body, that have no hope towards a bodily resurrection in the new bodies. And Paul's going to share all that with us as we keep moving ahead. But I pray that you give us courage to believe that you made us body and soul. You've redeemed us body and soul by sending your son into human flesh, into conquering sin in the grave. And you have promised a bodily resurrection to come where we will dwell with you in glorious eternity. I pray that you bless us now with faith and great joy in what you've provided in the resurrection of your son, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.